Welcome performers to the Oracle Witches Dance Gathering. Unlike our past dance gatherings, this is a unique opportunity to dance to a specific symbol already prescribed. To learn about those symbols in detail, you can go to Act 1, led by Madame Ansa, who uses tarot, or Act 2, led by Dana Buffet, who uses runes. If you would like to submit multiple applications, that's perfectly fine. Um. <laughs> Learn more about the symbols as you move forward and tell us your ideas. Hey everybody, we are uh, going to make a quick clip here to show you and talk to you about the cards that we are using in this show, in the Oracle show. Uh, Dana will do the same thing for the runes, so I'm going to do that for you right now. And this will also be shared in a document. So there'll be an introduction where the Fey dance group uh, opens the whole show uh, and does sort of a circle dance. They'll introduce the Oracle, which in this case will be me. I will come out and just pose a question that is something like, what does this year hold for the community? Uh, and Dana will do the same thing, actually. We're going to do a little, little pass about just to set the stage. I will come out and I will lay the cards uh, out. And then the performers, uh, one at a time, will come out and perform their pieces. So the first card that gets laid out here is, what describes the state of the community right now? That's going to be the High Priestess. Some of her qualities are she is the veil between worlds, so she is divine, cool, somewhat remote, uh, very inwardly focused, mystical, intuitive. She really speaks to your gut instinct, uh, to your uh, sort of queenliness. There we go. <laughs> uh, queenliness in a mystical sense. Uh, the color palette of. Ooh, you can grab that. Things are cooking. <laughs> the color palette uh, described in this card, typically in all versions, uh, pretty much are cool tones, blue, gray, lavender, uh, sort of misty, uh, sometimes there's pomegranates, uh, so a little red and yellow flare thrown in there. Again, her motivation uh, as an entity, she describes that veil between the spirit and the earthly world. Uh, traditionally, she's depicted between two pillars, like a black and a white pillar, sometimes uh, as a black woman. So the next card to come down. Uh, for the question, what challenges will arise for the community, and we have the devil. Uh, the personality qualities of the devil card, at their best, they are uh, sexy and alluring and rebellious, smart, at worst, of course, it's uh, excess, it's dangerous, over the top, uh, and being overcome by appetites, whether that is pleasure, power, uh, just addictive behavior in general. You can go wild with the devil card, but it generally the palette Color-wise, is black, gray, all the shades of red, fire, the bodily humors, so it's uh, very um, sort of dramatic. Uh, and again, the motivation of this, uh, the devil is a, is a rebel who struggles against dogmatic authority, but it's also a slippery slope uh, to being consumed by addictive behavior. So uh, that's the, up and, the upside and the downside <laughs> of the devil card. I have a lot of empathy for that guy, but you don't want to live in that card. I just think of it as the too much Christmas card. Okay, uh, the third question that will be asked, dance-wise, is what will empower our community in the times to come? And for that card, we see the Empress. And of course, if you have a tarot deck, you're welcome to look her up uh, and refer to the art that you have. But some of her qualities are she's sensual, uh, self-sufficient, self-satisfied, can be decadent has wisdom, giving, uh, very um, earthy. She's really the earth mother. So everything about her is uh, self-nurturing and able to nurture others. Uh, again, there's a real quality of uh, empowerment, but definitely of this world. <laughs> the color palette being a, a, sort of an earth goddess. Uh, greens, browns, florals, everything abundant and lush. I would say there's some water in there too, although she overall speaks to qualities of earth, if you want to think about that. Uh, her other motivations. Uh, she's sort of the Earth Mother in the form of a mortal. So she's usually in a landscape filled with plants, animals, uh, and then every, everything about her is basking and relaxing. So that is the Empress who speaks to what can empower our community in the times to come. And the last card pulled here, where is this community going? That is the Lovers. 
So the traditional qualities of the lovers, of course, are balance, compromise, ebb and flow, asking and answering, <clears throat> co-arising and supporting, passion balanced by compassion, uh, a certain amount of fertility, either literal or creative. This card is always also about heal yourself. It's about self-love as an avenue to have uh, love to share with others. Um, the color palette is wide open there, but again, it's an emphasis of uh, balancing opposites. So, uh, you know, black and white, water and fire, yin and yang, um, whatever. And this definitely is a good piece, like a call and response piece that would be done well by two people. Uh, again, can be romantic, but it can definitely be a creative partnership too. Uh, also, lilies and roses uh, are a traditional symbol um, with sort of a purity of intention and passion mixed. So, these four uh, archetypes will be danced out and uh, by different performers who are jazzed to be part of this. And, uh, and then we will find a way to make a closure of that first set. Uh, we may have tea, leaf reading, we're not sure. And then uh, the second act opens with Dana and with the runes. So I hope that's helpful. And uh, sorry this video was five minutes long. <laughs> Again, to reiterate, we have the High Priestess in her many iterations. We have the Devil. We have the Empress. We have the Lovers. I was hoping that these cards would also offer an opportunity for people to step outside the gender binary as well. Uh, while the priestess and the empress have a certain amount of uh, femininity implied in them, uh, we do what we want. And also, uh, both the lovers and the devil cards leave it wide open for broader interpretation. Hope that helps. Thanks. Okay, so I figured you want to see the cat. Cat wants to. Alright, so we have four runes. I will probably end up doing the oracle piece to introduce all of these runes. I'm thinking about doing like. A stick web of weird. A web of weird is. This is a terrible drawing. Nine lines that crisscross in which you can find all of the different runes inside of. Um, and then I will probably have the runes that I pull out of that. That's what I'm planning. I'm thinking. Now she's playing with my feet. Totally not fair. I totally set this up so you can see her. Um, uh, the first rune that we have. Is. That it? is Feo, um, it represents an F uh, in the Fu Tharg. It is the first of all of the signs I will have. It also can look like this. Um, I will have the, um, a little bit more on all of these in a text document uh, for us to kind of create uh, a vibe with all of the words. But I'm thinking like, white but like ash white black red green um natural kind of fibers not a whole lot of like sparkle more like body paint antlers bone um kind of a wardrina maybe viking-esque look something that's a little darker um you know, something that just makes you feel badass, but also that interprets each one of these runes. So the Fail rune is of wealth and cattle. Um, it is spiritual richness, richness the benefits, um, the things that benefit everyone, not necessarily you, um, and claiming your destiny and spiritual gifts. Uh, these can be interpreted in many different ways because runes aren't necessarily archetypes, but um, they are perspectives. So like different life perspectives, different ways to look at situations that you're in. So I kind of tried to pull from like the community and things that we would need um, to be prosperous. Uh, and I feel like this is kind of like the coming of all of this work uh, that's in some of the other runes. So the other rune that I drew, terrible drawing, is Odal. Um, this is the rune of prosperity and possessions. Um, there is a, th a thought of a perspective of we're not 
we don't own anything in this world. We're borrowing everything. We're borrowing the knowledge from our ancestors. We're borrowing um, all of our belongings. Um, so holding instead of owning something. Um, and, and how that feels. Um, not for, for forcing things. As you begin to force, you lose them. So kind of letting um, things present themselves to you. And then just not losing sight of the things, uh, of your actual dreams. And not letting those be taken from you. So like prosperity and possessions. And the third rune is Ned looks kind of like a crooked cross. Um, this is patience and need. What we need versus what we want. Um, uh, lying to gain, um, to gain like presence instead of accepting the lessons that we need to learn, the hard lessons, that kind of stuff. Um, so, um, patience and need and having the patience to have the gifts um, come to you or just like not forcing things that don't fit um, and then the final round again not in any particular order is dag uh, dag is of light um, and ambition but it is also like the transformation room so this point in the middle is like that moment uh, when two things become one that become something completely different. Um, the, a lot of people use it as like a protection room. Um, it signifies success and clarity of vision, um, remaining true, humble in the face of ego. It's kind of the emotional intent of the rune, um, but it is also symbolic of change transition um, in, into the light because darkness is not evil it's just a kind of light a, a quality of light um, so that is the fourth room so we have abundance uh, well Thank you.